Welcome to AgriTalk and thank you for keeping it, Katie and Farmers TV. On today's uh, conversation, we are talking about um, uh, the use of pesticides, the increased use of pesticides. And with me in studio today, I'm with uh, Claire Nasike. She is a food uh, campaigner at Greenpeace Africa. Welcome to the show, uh, Claire. Thank you so much for having me, Philip. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at Greenpeace Africa. As you said, my name is Claire Nasike. I work as a food campaigner at Greenpeace Africa, and I'm also an agroecologist by profession. Okay. Yeah. So, what does uh, when it comes to uh, when you talk about food campaigner um, and agri uh, Greenpeace Africa? I've seen a lot of stuff that Greenpeace does. Uh, where does the relationship between food and some of the things that Greenpeace uh, Africa does match? So Greenpeace Africa is an independent environmental organization and where it merges with food is how food is produced. So some of this food is produced in a way that is detrimental to the environment. There's the increased um, usage of chemicals that are harming water bodies that are harming the air and harming the soil. So that's where Greenpeace Africa comes in. And aside from that, we're also keen on making sure that the consumers have access to safe food. This is their fundamental right, their constitutional right. So Greenpeace is a human rights organization as well as an environmental organization that is independent. It's not really, uh, it does not rely on uh, other people or governments or UN agencies to fund it. That's why I say it's an independent environmental organization that speaks for human rights and environmental rights. Okay. When you talk about the use of the increased use of pesticides, how is the situation at the moment? I think the situation in Kenya at the moment um, on uh, the usage of pesticides, we've seen that there's a skyrocketing use of pesticides. This is insecticides, herbicides, and, and fungicides in Kenya. And um, a while ago, I think it was about in 2019, um, the Route to Food did a study that um, they actually published a white paper that showed that between 2015 and 2018, there was an increase in the use of herbicides, fungicides, and insecticides from about um, 6,400 tons to about 15,000 tons. And this is a high increase of pesticides that we are using in, in food production. Okay. With this increase, um, um, is it um, in the positive or in the negative? I think it is in the negative. Mm -hmm. And I say it is in the negative because um, when we look at some of these uh, pesticides that are used in food production, we find that some of them are harmful. Some of them are carcinogenic. They have the possibility of causing cancer. Mm -hmm. Some of them are mutagenic. They, some can affect um, the reproduction systems. Some can affect our hormonal systems, what we call endocrine disruptors. So this increase in the usage of pesticides actually is on the negative side and you find that there's no safe use of these pesticides that's one and then the people who are using this uh, pesticide like the farmers some of them do not have the appropriate gear that they are supposed to use when spraying these pesticides so what does that leave them to they're exposed to some of the harmful pesticides and not just the farmers alone who are the producers but also the consumers so consumers were, were consuming food that has been produced with a lot of pesticides and we don't know the harmfulness of these pesticides because there's no data in the public domain that shows us that this is harmful and this is not harmful. Okay. When you talk about the use of pesticides, especially in food production, what type of pesticides are these? There are several pesticides that are used in food production. I'm not an expert on that, so I won't um, take a deep dive into it, but I know there's insecticides, fungicides, herbicides that are particularly used to uh, control weeds and pests uh, and, and fungi in food production systems. Okay. Um, sometime, uh, sometime back we had, uh, I think it's 2019, if I'm not wrong, there were a number of pesticides that were banned, especially in Europe. The use by use of farmers or to be used in farms in Europe, but I still understand they are still being used here. Is um, is that true? And if that is true, how? Why is this? Uh, I think that is true. Um, the reason it's true is that um, some of the pesticides that are sold in Kenya, they have something called a, an active ingredient. Mm -hmm. So this active ingredient is the chemical within that pesticide that controls any pests or any disease. So you find that some of the 
uh, pesticides that are sold in the Kenyan market, they have active ingredients that are not sold in other European countries. Mm -hmm. And this is despite the fact that these pesticides that are sold here with those active ingredients not sold in the European countries are produced in some of those European countries, but they are sold here. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can give an example just of, of the few active ingredients that are sold in Kenya. We have um, uh, cabendazim, we have permethrin, we have acephet, and uh, we also have chlorothalonil. So some of these are actually carcinogenic. They can cause, cause cancer, and this has been proven. Some of them are mutagenic. From what I've mentioned, they're mutagenic, but they're still sold here. They're used in the Kenyan market to produce food. If you go to the agrovet shops and look at the products that have cabendazim, you're going to find a number of products in them. But cabendazim is toxic to human health. It's toxic to the environment. So why are they still being sold here, but they're not sold in their countries of, of manufacture? Okay. Yeah. You've asked a very good question. Why are they being, uh, still being sold here? I would like to pose the same question to you. All right. So when it comes to the importation, exportation, the regulation and the distribution and the use of pesticides in Kenya. All this is under the Pest Control Products Board, what we call the PCPB, mm -hmm. a statutory um, governmental um, organization of the Kenyan government. So it's supposed to regulate these pesticides. But what we have seen is that um, there are loopholes when it comes to regulation of these pesticides. Um, I'll give you a quick example. So when you go to the European database on um, pesticides. You key in some of these active ingredients that several organizations like civil um, society organizations have um, mentioned that are sold in Kenya but are banned from uh, use in European countries. You'll find that they are indeed banned there but they're still sold. So that then asks does PCPB do um, carry out the due diligence to show that to know that the chemicals that are sold here, the pesticides that are sold in Kenya, are actually used in their country of origin. Because before they're used here, they're supposed to be used in their country of origin. But you find that they're not used in Europe, but they're used in Kenya. So what was the origin, what was the basis of approving some of these pesticides to be sold here? Mm -hmm. And there's also scientific evidence that show that some of these pesticides are actually carcinogenic. They can cause cancer. So why are we then permitting some of these pesticides to be sold here? Why is PCPB rather permitting some of these pesticides to be sold here, but they're banned? elsewhere and, and based on their toxic, uh, toxicology. Like recently, was it last year in August? Um, and this was, um, I'd like to believe it was after several civil society organizations like Greenpeace, like Root to Food and, and Kenya Organic Agriculture Movement fronted some active ingredients to be banned for use. And one active ingredient was um, chlorothalonil. So chlorothalonil is used in food production. And PCPB in August 2020 issued a circular saying that they would like to ban the use of chlorothalonil in Kenya because it is toxic to human health. So if they have identified that one active ingredient, why can't they do the rest for this? Do we have to wait for civil society organizations to speak up about this for them to do what they are mandated to do? Okay. In terms of also um, distribution of this um, pesticide and uh, uh, pesticides you, you, you mentioned. There are a number of companies that supply and distribute these pesticides. Um, what role do they play in terms of ensuring that whatever they are supplying should also be safe if there's anything like safe when it comes to pest, pesticide use to the consumers? I don't believe that there is safe use of pesticides um, because at the end of the day, some of these pesticides persist in the environment. So the continued use just means that they're going to persist in the environment. And persistence uh, in, this, in this case means um, there are long-term occurrence in the environment. So we cannot say that we're using pesticides safely, yet when I go to take an analysis of the, of the water or the soil, I'll find those pesticides there. So I don't believe there's safe use of pesticides. Um, the agrovet shops who are responsible for selling some of these uh, pesticides to, to the producers, I think they're in it to make money and it's not within their purview to inform producers of the toxicity of the active ingredients. Because when a farmer walks to an agrovet shop, they'll say, oh, my, my crops or my maize has been affected by this kind of pests. And the agrovet dealer will say, take this. 
but they will not go down to explain to the farmer that this is supposed to be used this way or this can only be done this way, no. So they don't do that. And the only organization that I believe or the statutory body that I believe can protect producers from such kind of harmful pesticides is the PCPB because it's the mandated organization that is supposed to look at the use and the distribution of these harmful pesticides. Okay. I'm also trying to think, um, you, you talked about these pesticides are coming from countries where they are banned. Isn't there an international law where it's, uh, it, 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 it restricts or protects consumers from other regions? Well, there are several um, international laws um, around pesticides, but um, there have been loopholes in that. Mm -hmm. Because you find that certain laws, you know, they, they say if this is produced in a certain country, but this country wants to use it, then they can, they can, they can uh, import it and, and use it, but then they have to notify their they have to notify their consumers or producers on the toxicity of this. So that is one of the loopholes you, 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 you look at. You like, so if this is toxic, you know it's toxic, but it's produced in your country, but you are letting us use it, then, you know, that is like double standards. There are several, there are several of them. There's the Rotterdam Convention. There are several of, of those international laws on, on pesticides. But I think um, the pesticide business is driven by profits. You know, we, 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 we try to camouflage the profits under food production and um, increasing food um, security, uh, insecurity, you know. We, we're talking of people will have access to food, but if there are pests and diseases, you know, then people will not have access to food. So we have to use pesticides. But at the end of the day, these pesticides cause more harm than good uh, when it comes to food production. Okay. You, you mentioned about... Um uh, when it comes to especially the farmers, they may know, not know the content of the pesticide they are buying. Um, but is there a way that uh, the consumers can also help um, ensuring that whatever the, these farmers are producing is, of, uh, is safe and good for human consumption? I think the consumers have also uh, a big role to play when it comes to ensuring that the food that ends on their tables um, is grown in a, in a safe manner. If consumers started um, advocating for safe food and asking for safe food, then the farmers will have no choice but to grow food in a safe way. But you see, majority of the consumers, particularly in Nairobi, most of the people don't know what is in, on their plates. You go to the supermarket, you find skumawiki, you find spinach, you take that home, but you don't know how this skumawiki has grown. Probably if you took the skumawiki you bought from the market or from the supermarket, if you took it uh, for analysis, let's say you had access to the KFIS laboratory and you took it to the analysis and you found out that this skumawiki has pesticide residues above the maximum residue levels, then you would be concerned about the kind of food you eat. But they are not aware what is in the food that they eat. Um, recently, uh, Kenya Organic Agriculture um, Coan Network, they, they did um, a study on tomatoes, and they found that most of the tomatoes uh, in Muranga County, they have a lot of uh, pesticide residues. I'm sure most of the Muranga residents were not aware of that. So that's the same thing with consumers almost everywhere in Kenya. They are not aware of how their food is produced. You, you see a mango looking uh, yellow and nice from Ukambani, you think this mango is safe for you to consume. But what you don't know probably is the amount of pesticide residues on, on the mango. Okay. So what do we need to do as a country to make sure that there is awareness out there? Uh, between you and me that we all know that uh, or we all need to know that we need to consume uh, safe foods and we push whoever is in charge of ensuring that food production in the country or any food that is being sold within the borders of this country are safe for human consumption. I think we need to, the first step we need to begin at is um, supporting the civil society organizations that are fronting, um, that are actually requesting the government to ban some of these harmful pesticides that are sold in Kenya. We've seen the number of um, cancer cases in the country has skyrocketed. Some of these pesticides that are still sold in Kenya 
have been associated with cancer. And there's scientific research that shows that some of these pesticides are carcinogenic, they are mutagenic, some of them are endocrine disruptors. So we need to make sure that PCPB, which is the body that regulates the importation, exportation, and the distribution and sale of pesticides within this country, bans those harmful pesticides from use in Kenya. If they are banned elsewhere, then they ought to be banned from use in Kenya because we as the consumers, first of all, we have the right to safe and healthy food. So if those are not banned, then the food we are still consuming is unsafe. That's the first step. The second thing is that we need to support farmers to grow organic food. And how can we support farmers to grow organic food is by purchasing food directly from some of these farmers. We've seen a lot of uh, small, uh, we've seen a lot of organic markets that are coming up and that are frequented by small scale food producers. So if we can buy food directly from the producers, we eliminate the middlemen who make it difficult for the, for the food producers to get a profit and be able to produce more organic food. So if we can purchase food from the smallholder farmers, then we are ensuring that they're able to produce more for us. And aside from that, we also need um, monitoring, continuous monitoring by the relevant um, governmental institutions. So for example, CAFIS, um, if they can provide data to the public that shows the amount of pesticide residues in the food within the open air markets, in the foods within the supermarkets. I think that would help consumers make informed decisions, also producers, because now you'll know, if I go to buy food at the Kangemi market, mm. I know this food is not good because there was a research that was done by Kefis that showed that this food has pesticides. So I'm gonna look for organic food. And we also need to encourage our farmers to produce organic food, because as it stands, most of the policies that we have in Kenya they sort of gear towards industrial agriculture. And I mean, industrial agriculture, you know, the excessive, uses of, um, excessive usage of agrochemicals, which, inclu is, is, uh, which includes the pesticides and the fertilizers. So if we can have organic agriculture policies that encourage farmers to use organic ways to produce food, then that way we will be ensuring that we have, we as consumers have access to safe food and our producers also aren't exposed to harmful uh, chemicals. And it doesn't end there. We're also looking at the environment. Food comes from soil and, and water. So if our water is polluted and the soil is polluted, definitely those pesticides in the soil will find their ways to the crops. Okay, okay Claire. Let's take a short commercial break, and then we'll come back and continue that conversation. Um, I, I, I see your passion in this, and I, and I see the point why this is important for all of us. So let's take a short commercial break, and we will be back shortly. Can sing, bro. Uh,